In the previous video, we talked about how to determine whether the American unit or the metric unit was larger. Now we're going to talk about how to convert from the American units to metric units and vice versa. The first step in these problems is to decide which type of unit you have. What we know is we cannot change from mass to length or area or volume, and we can't change between those different units at this point. We don't know how to change from one type of unit to another. So these metric to American units are going to stay within one of the major boxes. So it'll be either a mass, a length, an area, or a volume. So previously, we gave you some ideas of how to determine what type of measurement you have. So remember that mass is how you might weigh something like a steak or something like that, or an elephant or even a little bit of um, powder. And if you were to look at the length, that's how long your pencil is or how far away the school is or something like that. An area will have something with the word square in it, most likely. And then the volume is either going to say cubic somewhere in its name, or possibly it'll be a way that we might buy milk or water. And then also just to note that we do have this little notation that one cubic centimeter is equal to one cc is equal to one milliliter. We may need to use that because some of our conversions, as you see above, might say centimeters cubed, but I might give you the question in milliliters or I might give it to you in cc's. So we use those interchangeably, which means you can replace the question, you can replace whichever one you need so that it'll work out right in the conversion. Once we've determined the section that we're going to look at, the next thing you would want to do is to make a ratio out of whatever your question is. So in the first question, in letter A, we see that we have centimeters and inches, which tells us we're in the region of length. So we'll be focusing on the length section for that one. And then we're going to look for the one that has both centimeters and inches, and we'll see that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. And we're going to use that as a ratio. So as a reminder, that means that we can write one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, and we can divide both sides by one inch so that we have one inch over one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters over one inch, and so that means 2.54 centimeters per one inch is equal to one, so we can use that as a conversion factor. Or we could again write one inch equals 2.54 centimeters and divide both sides by 2.54 centimeters. Again, because these two are equivalent to each other, it doesn't matter which one goes on top and which goes on the bottom, just that we have a ratio between centimeters and inches. So at this point, we would now have one inch over 2.54 centimeters is equal to 2.54 centimeters over 2.54 centimeters, which is one. And so we would have one inch over 2.54 centimeters is another ratio. Now let's figure out how to use it. So let's go to letter A and see how we do it. All right, to start this problem, we look to see what type of problem it is first. We see that we have something in the metric system. We have something in the American system. So we know we're going to use the American to metric system chart. And this chart will be provided on the exam. You don't have to guess what it is. So we will be giving you this chart on the exam at all times, or I'll tell you the ratio of just that one section. And then we want to look to see what kind of unit it is. And again, we already figured out that that is a length unit. So we're going to focus on just the length section, and we're going to see that 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. Now, how do we start the problem? Well, we're going to look at what we know. We know that we have 14.2 inches. We're going to make that into a fraction by dividing by the number 1. That's just to make it easier for us to look at. Then we're going to multiply by something, and we want to make sure that the units cancel out. So right now we have inches on top. We need to put an inches on the bottom. So we're going to put inches on the bottom, and we're going to put centimeters on top because that's what we're headed to, and we see the ratio gives us inches and centimeters. What goes with the inches? Notice that there's a number 1 here with the inch. We're going to put the 1 with the inch, and the 2.54 stays with the centimeter. So we're going to have 14.2 inches on the top divided by 1 times 2.54 centimeters divided by 1 inch. And that gives us our answer of... 36.068 centimeters. Notice that the inches cancels out and our answer is left in centimeters. Now we're not going to worry about the actual number if it's 36.06 or 36.068 or whatever the number is because it is a multiple choice question on your exam. So don't get too stressed about how many places to put the decimal in. If the answer says put it to two decimals, then go ahead and put it to two decimals. If it says to one decimal place, then put it to one. You should not see that question of how many decimal places to put it on the exam, but you may see it on the online homework.
Now let's move on to letter B. Okay, so in letter B, we notice that we do have the metric system. We have liters, and we have the American system where we have quarts. So we are doing American to metric or metric to American. And so we'll use our chart. Next, we need to figure out what type of unit do we have. So what do you think we have? Hopefully you picked that it is volume, so we're going to look at just the volume section. And you should spot the one with the liters and the quarts down there at the bottom. So where do we start the question? Let's start with what we know, which is 7.3 quarts. Put that over 1 to make it into a fraction. We want the quarts to cancel out, so we're going to put quarts on the bottom for this question. And we're going to put liter on the top. You'll notice that the 1.06 goes with the quart, and the 1 goes with the liter. So that we have 7.3 quarts over 1 times 1 liter divided by 1.06 quart, and the quarts are canceling out. And on your calculator, you'll see that you get 6.908 liters. And again, the quarts is going to cancel out, so that we're left with our unit of liters. Again, do not worry about exactly how many numbers, how many places you go out in the decimal place. It won't be a problem because it is multiple choice on the exam and there won't be a various numbers there. On to letter C. On letter C, we can see that we have feet and meters, which means we have both the American and the metric system. And we see that we have square feet and square meters which means we are in the area section. We're going to start with what we know, which in this case is that we have 50 square meters. Write that over 1. We want the square meters to cancel out, so we're going to put square meters on the bottom. And then what do we want to put on top? Now notice that we have two different conversions. One goes to square feet and one goes to square yards. Which one should we choose? Of course, we should pick, pick the one that says square feet because that's what we're looking for in our answer. So we're going to put foot squared on the top, and then we're going to figure out the numbers. And again, the 1 goes with the square meter, and in this case, 10.76 goes with square feet. So we take our 50 square meters, divide it by 1, multiply it by 10.76 square feet, divide that by 1 square meter, and we see that the meters squared cancels out, leaving our answer in feet squared, and we get 538. 0.169 square feet. Again, don't worry about the 0.169. It'll be fine because it's going to be multiple choice. I'm going to do a few more to give you a little bit more practice with this. I find that people have, this is a challenging um, topic. So if you're having some trouble, go ahead and continue on. If you feel like you've got it, you do not have to watch the rest of the video. So on letter D, we're going to find out how many pounds is 78.7 kilograms. So part one, what type of unit do we have? So think about pounds when you're weighing something. Look at a mass or weight. So we're going to look at that section. And we'll start our question with what we know, which is 78.7 kilograms. I'm going to write that over 1 to make it into a fraction. We're going to cancel out the kilograms. We're going to put 1 kg on the bottom. And we're going to convert that one to pounds. So that'll be 2.20 pounds on top. So we have 78.7 kilograms divided by 1 times 2.20 pounds divided by 1 kilogram and that will be equal to 173.504 pounds and again as long as you get around 173.5 ish you're in good shape um, and that again should be in pounds let's move on to letter E another one that is not in your notes we start by reading the question and identifying what type of question we have. And here we have how many cubic inches are in 15 milliliters. And so cubic inches says cubic, which tells me I'm doing something with volume. And milliliters, the liters, tells us that we're doing something with volume. So we are doing a volume to volume calculation here. And it looks like it is metric and American. So we're going to use the metric to American chart. And so we want to look at what section we have, and we're going to only focus on the volume section. So this question has an extra challenge to it. Let's go ahead and see how it works out. We're going to start with what we know. We have 15 milliliters. We're going to put that on top. 
then we're going to put that over 1 for our fraction, and we're going to make our next fraction. We're going to put what on the bottom? Yeah, we should have milliliters on the bottom, so we're going to look for milliliters, put that on the bottom, and then we're going to try to find inches cubed. And I don't see it there in with milliliters. The milliliter one seems to have ounces, not inches cubed. That actually should say fluid ounces, not ounces. But you'll notice at the very top that we do have something with one cubic inch. So we can convert one cubic inch into 16.4 cubic centimeters. But that is not the same as a milliliter, or is it? So if you look down at the bottom, you'll notice that we have this little note. One cubic centimeter is equal to one cc is equal to one milliliter. There are two ways you can do this. You can write the question again as how many cubic inches are in 15 cubic centimeters. That would be one way to do it. Or you can go ahead and continue with the problem we have here and just add one additional step. So right now we have milliliters on the bottom. We can say that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. And now we've canceled those two milliliters out and we're left with cubic centimeters. And we can continue the rest of the problem. We can now say then that we have, so we'll put the cubic centimeters on the bottom and the cubic inches on top. We keep the 16.4 with the cubic centimeters and put the one with the cubic inches. And now we can go ahead and put that into our calculator and we will see that we have 15 milliliters divided by one times one cubic centimeter divided by one cubic centimeter. So you can see that has no effect on the actual calculation times one cubic inch divided by 16.4 cubic centimeters. And that leaves us our answer. Once milliliters cancels out, centimeters cancel, cancels out, that leaves us our answer in cubic inches. And so we get 0 0.915 cubic inches. We'll add one more. We're going to call that letter F. And here we ask how many grams is 56.4 ounces? Again, we see this is a metric and American because we have grams and ounces. So we'll be using the chart. Now we just get to figure out which section of the chart. And when we're weighing in ounces, that is a weight or mass. And so we'll focus on the mass sec. We start the problem with the 56.4 ounces. We're going to write that over 1. Then we're going to put ounces on the bottom in the question. We see 1 ounce on the bottom. And we're going to convert that to grams, which will be 28.35 grams on top. So that gives us 56.4 ounces divided by 1 times 28.35 grams divided by 1 ounce. The ounces cancel out, and we are left with 1,598.913 grams as our answer. Again, don't worry about how many decimal places. So those are a few examples of how to do American to metric conversions. Again, this method that we're using is super important because we're going to be using it again, especially in Unit 3 where it will get a little bit more complicated.